Hey everybody, it's April 1st. Um, hopefully this one's gonna be a quick one because I just wanna go over the afternoon of a toad. So kind of our, um, kind of what we would do in class by having a little class discussion, but um, we're just gonna go over what we're looking for in the poems, okay? So let me move my little guy here. All right. And I'm going, I'm not going to try to inundate you guys with videos in the beginning, um, just because we're getting this underway. It might, you know, it might take a little bit of time um, just to get going, but then you guys will get used to the routine. You won't need to do all this anymore. So, <clears throat> excuse me. All right. So today we're going to talk about afternoon of a toad. Um, so your admit slip. For today is write three to five sentences about what you thought about the two poems that we have looked at so far, which is Books Fall Open and Afternoon of a Toad. Um, I want to know why you like them, and I want to know why you don't like them, if you're going to choose one or the other. Um, and just like always, you have to give me a reason. Not just, I don't like it because it's dumb. You got to give me a reason why you don't like it. You can do this the same way you've done the rest of this stuff. You can turn it into PantherNet. There is a way to upload it to the assignment. You can do it through Google Classroom or you can email me a copy. So um, this is an example. Um, no, go back. Okay. Um, this is an example of a tercet. I've got it on the right side here. Um, but if you notice that it has three lines in each stanza, um, and a tercet can be rhyming or unrhyming. This is a rhyming uh, tercet. So it's called a triplet tercet. Um, but why did we dissect this poem? It is a snapshot of nature, um, which a lot of poems are. They like the natural world. Poets like to talk about the natural world. Um, and I put the sumptuousness of language. I use sumptuousness on purpose um, because it is a ridiculous word that if you were to say in conversation, um, your friends would probably say, why did you just use the word sumptuous? Um, but the lovely thing about poetry is you can use all of those words that you don't normally use in um, your everyday life and you get to stick them in verse and it sounds unbelievably beautiful. So this is just a basic poem about a toad and some bugs in the mud in a garden. And um, it's just really lovely. And it's lovely because of the language. It's lovely because of the vocabulary. It's lovely because of the rhyme scheme um, and the enjambment. We talked about that before. Um, that is, and I have somebody knocking on my door. Hold on a second. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, River came to my door and let me know that she had written a song and I could not wait. Um, so we um, love this because um, of enjambment and because they, he uses a lot of enjambment in this poem which means he cuts off the sentence at the end of the line and um, thereby uh, emphasizing certain words within the poem. And he also uses sejuras, um, which is basically um, some punctuation in the line itself that causes a pause or a full stop. And so um, that is another reason that we dissected this poem because it is deceptively simple. So here we have some dahlias because we talk about dahlias. Um, and so I am just going to read this poem really quickly with you, um, and then we are going to talk about it. So, the purblind toad, toad, a stain of rust in uncooperative dust, is happy now to readjust his hip and his hop and stop in stippled shade of dahlias where the hose has made primordial ooze. Slugs, bugs parade with flying batons, floats, balloons. One surfacing pink worm festoons himself, such summer afternoons a paradise. The swift unhung, now flickering amphibian's tongue forks lightning out amid among. Okay, so go back. Sorry. Okay, so I had you guys do. I have got all of the definitions here for all of these words because this is a very tiny poem and half of the words you may have never heard of before. You may not know what festoons mean. I didn't know what festoons meant. Now I know. Um, so purblind means having Im impaired or defective vision. So his, um, you know, we, we see him there and we kind of imagine him having a bunch of mud on his face um, because toads actually have really good eyesight. So I don't think he's referring to him as being blind. Um, but perhaps something is in his way. 
Um, and he's an uncooperative dust. Um, it's just not working for him. It's it's not helping him in any way. So he happily hops over into the shade where um, it's stippled shade. So that is to make small, short touches of ink, basically. Like it's like, it's kind of modeled. And so you imagine him in this mucky garden and the shade is kind of half shaded, half not. If you've ever sat beneath a tree and the sun is shining, sometimes the sun comes through the branches and it causes that beautiful, um, you know, stippled um, sunlight reflection basically on um, on the ground. So we imagine him kind of half in, half out of light. Um, and the dahlias, you just saw a picture of the dahlias. Um, they're quite pretty. And also they, it's, the word dahlia sounds really nice, doesn't it? Um, and it's primordial ooze, and I just, I, primordial and primeval are two, one of, they're just one of those, my two favorite words. Um, it's from the beginning of time, existing since the beginning of time. You know, it, there's just something um, inherently earthy and before us and after us. It's just one of those things where, you know, mud and the earth and it was kind of here before us and it's going to be here after us. It's just, it's got a great sound to it. So he's in the primordial ooze. Um, and um, and so the slugs and bugs floating around with flying batons, floats and balloons. Um, you know, we think about them we, kind of marching along and they've got all this stuff. They've got all the antennas. They have um, eyes that are kind of weird. You know, I mean, you think about all the, the accoutrement that goes along with being a bug, like, you know, that, that, trying to think of the right word for it. Um, but you kind of think when you're reading this, you know, they have all the stuff that they have and they're kind of like a little parade um, with all their antennas and eyes and mucky goodness that bugs and slugs have. Um, and it says one surfacing pink worm festoons himself. Um, so he... <sighs> I mean, this is hard to explain, but festoons, um, a chain of garland or flowers, leaves or ribbons. So like he's kind of caught up in, he doesn't mean to, but he's above the surface of the ground or he's on the surface of the ground and he's kind of caught up, kind of looking like a decoration because he's around the, the leaves and the flowers and all of that stuff. So he becomes a festoon, part of that decoration, right? Um, and I love the line, such summer afternoons are paradise. Because if you think about that humid, beautiful summer afternoon, if you've had a great summer afternoon and it's kind of lazy, um, you know, it's just summer afternoons can be really great. Um, and it's a very simple sentence, but it's a very true sentiment. Um, the swift, unhung, now flickering amphibian's tongue forks lightning out amid among. Such a magical sentence. Um, so we get this um, this image of him m mucking around in the garden, but we've got this lightning tongue because he might be going after these bugs. He might, you know, like all of a sudden in the languid afternoon, we have a flickering of a tongue going out because we know how fast they are, right? Um, in a mid, which means in the middle of. So that is that. So if we go through this, basically, who is the speaker? Um, it's just an outside observer. It's an omniscient narr narrator. Um, you know, like, it, it, we don't know who this is. It's just an omniscient person, you know. Um, the theme is nature. It's, period. it's just nature. It's the nature of these beings. It's the nature of the afternoon. It's just summertime, you know. Now, this was written in 1979. And if we look at his biography, David McCord, um, you will see that there's a timeline of when he was born and when he died and when this might have happened. But I looked this up. And it was written in 1979. It was actually published in Poetry Magazine. So the form of the poem. Um, this is a tercet. So if you see here, rust, dust, and readjust, you have three lines in one stanza. So it's kind of like a, that's our thought, right? Um, and it's rhymed, which he didn't have to do, but he did. And it's so lovely. Um, so we have the rhyme scheme, which we're going to talk about in one second. Um, and he also also makes use of iambic tetrameter. If it sounds musical, it's because it is. It is a stressed, unstressed um, syllable um, 
Um, so wait a minute, hold on a second. The per blind poo. No, it's unstressed, stressed. Why do I always do that? Um, so basically, uh, scratch that because I did that incorrectly. Flop it. It's unstressed, stressed syllables in four feet. So instead of being um, pentameter, which is five feet, which is what Shakespeare used, this is one foot short of that. It is a tetrameter. So um, this is really difficult. Okay, like this is just a poem about a toad, but he took a lot of effort into making this poem what it is. That's one of the reasons we're looking at it is because you just think it's a poem about a toad mucking about, but he's actually, it's a really complicated toad. Okay, um, so the plot, like I said, toad hopping around in his garden, um, the insects and the bugs and the wet summer afternoon. Um, and then the meter and rhyme, I have it, I pulled it down here. We've got iambic tent tetrameter. And it's going to be A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 D, 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 because we've got rust, dust, readjust, and shade, made, parade, balloons, festoons, afternoons, and unhung, tongue, and among. So that is your rhyme scheme. And then if you noticed, the per, blind toad, a stain of rust. Da, 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 da. Kind of like a horse, dun, 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 you know? In cup. An uncooperative dust is happy now to readjust. Amazing, okay? It's just, these are just words. It's cool though, you know? It's my poetry, is my fave. Okay, why does that keep happening? Stop, okay. So poetic devices. We've got metaphors here. The slugs are parading with flying balloons. They don't actually have balloons. Slugs don't have balloons. Um, and then the imagery. There's so much imagery. And I've got some here. The amphibian's tongue. Full not folks, <laughs> forks lightning out and the bug parade with flying batons and the stippled shade. You know, we really get a sense of being there because of the imagery that he uses. Um, and then personification in uncooperative dust. Dust is an uncooperative. It's not a person. It doesn't decide that it's not going to work with you. But in this case, we have personification um, because it's making it like the dust has a choice in the matter and it's deciding that. So this is an example of a poem that looks deceptively simple. It's about a toad. It's not that complex. It's about an awesome afternoon in the summer. And it seems sing-songy, almost nursery rhyme-ish, right? But it has a complicated meter and it has a rhyme scheme and it's done in a certain form. And that's why I wanted us to look at this poem, not because I think it's important that you read a poem about a toad, but because there's a lot to learn from it, okay? And it's fun when we have these parameters for the poems that we're looking at. This is a traditional form, but sometimes making yourself work within a traditional form uh, helps your writing, okay? It gives you something, it gives you a framework and you get to add things in and it forces you to think about things in a different way. So, um, so your exit slip for today is, come on, move screen. Okay, write three to five sentences about why it is important to define words in poetry that you don't understand, because this poem is an example of that. Give me your opinion on why it's important that you look up words that you don't know. Why is it important? What can that help us in reading poetry if we actually look the words up. Why is it important? Three to five sentences. Send it to me, Panthernet, Google Classroom, or email me a copy, whatever is easiest. Um, and then your homework is going to be to dissect Ars Poetica by Archibald MacLeish. Um, we are going to talk about uh, Ars Poetica tomorrow. Um, and so I want you to prep for that lecture um by reading this poem and dissecting it and telling me what you think about it so um and that will include a learning log as well i don't know why that's not on here but it will be in the assignment section so that's it thank you guys um we're excited see it never leaves this is, these are the, these are the things that i used within my thing just all goes back to the research paper i'm sure you love it all right guys have a great afternoon and i hope everyone is healthy and well in your house and i will See you soon.